Alaska, a land of snow and ice and the fastest warming state in the country. That's Justin from Dallas. He's 38, a roofing contractor and a staunch conservative. He rejects the mainstream science of climate change. I've thought all along that it's a natural occurrence. I just don't believe that it's something that we're causing or creating. I brought Justin to Alaska to answer three questions. Is the climate changing? Are people to blame? And how urgent is this? <laughs> we're on a glacier, man. My name is David Schechter. I'm a veteran reporter, and now I work for you. I'm taking real people out on the road to get their questions answered. And you're coming along for the ride. This is Verify Road Trip. A trip across Texas was the first half of our journey. We learned that it's widely accepted by climatologists that in a matter of decades, we've spiked our atmosphere with carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, and that is causing the temperature on Earth to rise. At the midway point of this trip, Justin says the jury is still out. My main takeaways from this first part of the trip were uh, everybody's against me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> they weren't really against me, but um, they had different opinions than me. This is a, uh, a route that people have been taking for, for thousands of years. We're meeting up with Brian Bretschneider. He's a climatologist with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And Brian wants us to see a glacier. That means we're going on a hike. I didn't sign up for this, man. <laughs> and it's straight uphill. <laughs> and it's raining. Oh, uh, that mountain kicked my butt. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Yeah. It's impressive. From a distance, it's kind of like a postcard. It's like what you always thought a glacier would look like. Yeah, by every metric, by every measure, our temperatures are, are significantly warmer here than they have been uh, decades, decades ago. This report from 13 U.S. government agencies, including NASA, says since the 1970s, the Earth has warmed 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit, and Alaska has warmed 3.5 degrees. In Alaska, many glaciers, like Portage Glacier, are disappearing. At one point, about the year early 1900s, it filled up this entire valley. There was no lake. It's pretty wild, but it's not here anymore. Yeah, so where we're sitting right now would have been under about five to 700 feet of ice. Oh, it's basically a skyscraper over our heads of ice that's no longer there. So, I mean, how do we know that that's just not what glaciers do, that, you know, that yeah. they don't just go away and then come back? I mean, how long have we been yeah. studying these glaciers to know whether or not that's what they do? Yeah, and that's a great question, because glaciers, they're dynamic. They, they surge, they retreat, and they, they've done that for long before people were here. Um, but it's the rate. The rate. Whereas glaciers might have receded over hundreds or thousands of years, now it's decades. Take a look at this picture from Portage Glacier. For reference, we're about here. And this is where the ice stopped in 2011. Now go back to 1950 to see how much longer the glacier used to be. This report in the journal Climate Dynamics found many glaciers around the world are projected to lose more than 50% of their current ice volume by 2050. What do the glaciers tell us about climate change? What's the story they tell? They get tremendous amounts of snow and precipitation, and they kind of are just barely below freezing. And so when you warm things up, even just a little bit, uh, you turn a tremendous amount of that snow into rain. So it's, it's raining instead of snowing. In, many, in much of the year, it's now raining instead of snowing. That'd be something to be worried about. Full disclosure, I think our elevational change is what, four feet? Ha, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the best news I've heard all day. This is insanely beautiful in here. It is, isn't it? Doug Causey is a biologist with the University of Alaska Anchorage. He studies this area, including the salmon, which spawn here just before they die. 
Um, so is this salmon right here? Yes. Okay. And these are coho salmon. So the cycle of life is that you breed, then you die, and and uh, you end up as fish also in the stream. You have to pay for college, too. That's, that's right. in there, that's, right? <laughs> that's right. Pay for college. To show us how warming temperatures here affect living things, Doug wants to take us into the stream to take some measurements. But Justin forgot his boots in the car. It's going to be cold. <laughs> but I was like, hey, when in Alaska, why not roll up your pants and jump in the water? This is an Alaska rigger, my friend. Uh, is it cold? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the water and then you just let it sit. Right now, it's four degrees warmer than it was last year. At this what? time. Okay. So that's, okay, so we're talking about one, one data point. One data point. But scientists in Alaska have years of measurements. They've concluded streams are getting warmer. And while it's normal to see dead salmon, this is where they go to die, Doug says what's not normal is how few salmon we're seeing. Compared to last year, this is half the number of fish we would, would normally see. But it could be one degrees and it'd be a big difference? Yes. Even that small amount, whether it's two or five degrees, means they can't go through the reproductive cycle. So that's not only affecting the glacier. But now it's also affecting the wildlife as well. And when, when that happens, you're gonna start looking for a reason and the reason that we concluded to is the climate change is Primarily, yes. Salmon don't live by themselves into an aquarium. They're part of, a, of an ecosystem. And if they're being affected by climate change, the ecosystem is. He wants the fish to come back. He wants the birds to be able to eat. Does that concern you? Yeah, it's starting to concern me. Um, it's, uh, yes, very concerning. 